Hopefully by now, everybody's got a crop that's coming up out of the ground. It's been a very, very long planting season, especially for my neighbors in the north. But I think we're finally to the point where we can start to evaluate stand for everybody and see how our planters perform. You've heard me talk about it in years prior, but the net effective stand percentage is really an unbiased way that we can measure our crops, emergence, and our planter performance to understand how well we did. If the spring and the winter that we just went through preparing to get this crop in the ground was a semester at college, this net effective stand is our final exam on how that planter performed and it gives us our grade for the semester. I'm Keith Byerly, Precision Ag Manager at Central Valley Ag, and this is your agronomy focus video that corresponds with my article on the CVA website. When we talk about that planter performance, we're talking about things like singulation, skips and doubles, and evenness of emergence. They're all topics that I've talked about before, so let's keep it brief today. When I talk about stand quality, I'm talking about things like this in front of me, where we have plants that are too close together, too far apart, or just in general are inconsistently spaced. If I see that happening across the big part of the planter, I feel like I've probably got some seed meter issues. If the problem comes and goes with changes in hybrids or changes in fields, I've probably got an issue that revolves around the seed itself. But if I see a fairly consistent pattern across most of my fields, or in specific areas of the field, it probably comes down to ride quality. That ride quality is the bouncing of the row unit. There are two ways to fix it. Either we slow down to four mile an hour and make it go away, or we look at making a technology addition to that planter to add down force to control our ride quality. Both of them are viable options, but not viable for everybody. I know a lot of you out there will look at me like I'm crazy if I tell you you need to put this entire crop in at four mile an hour, so that's where the technology decision comes into place. So when we move away from that and we talk about the consistency of our stand with skips and doubles and that whole side of things, I'm basically looking at the seed meter performance. If I see those issues across row to row and most of the planter, that's a seed meter problem that we need to get those meters in this spring or this summer and test them before we put the planter away for the winter. If we see it just sporadically throughout the field, or again with those changes in hybrids, we've possibly got a talc, a graphite issue where we need to do more or less, or it can even be a seed coating issue on the plant. We need to evaluate those things to make the decision so we don't repeat that problem. And then of course, there is the evenness of our emergence. We talk about it at length with our emergence studies and how we flag these plants to see how they come out of the ground 24, 48, and more hours apart. If we don't get those plants coming out in 48 hours, we're giving up yield. That's a problem because it's something that we can take action on. There's plenty of information locally and across the Corn Belt that tells us about how downforce systems can improve that ride quality, improve the consistency of our seeding depth, and improve the emergence that we see out there in our fields. That's an unexcusable sin in my opinion for this day and age. We need to make sure that we're getting good evenness of our crop emergence. So at the end of the day, I want you to really make sure you're going out and doing those net effective stand evaluations on your field because those net effective stand evaluations, again, are an unbiased evaluation of how your planter performed. If you're not comfortable doing them, talk to your trusted advisor or talk to a CVA equipment specialist because we'll come out and help you do that. So we don't necessarily think about doing a lot to our planters before we put them away for the year, but this year Central Valley Ag is gonna offer you guys some financing options and some cash discounts in the month of June that are gonna let us have an opportunity to defer our payments to November and see 0% interest through 2020. This is a great opportunity to let the crop come in in November and pay for those planter updates going forward and it lets us get those planter updates done now before the planter goes into the shed for the year. Back to that same point again, we don't often think about doing things this time of year, but the sins that we just had, the problems that we just had are fresh in our mind, and we know that time heals all wounds. If we wait for next March, we won't remember the problems that we had planting this crop, and we won't remember these net effective stands that we measured now. So let's measure, let's analyze, and let's take action while the planters are still outside.